You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Uh, some of the 74 political parties they registered by the Independent National Electoral Commission in 2020 say they will challenge the electoral umpire's action. They were deregistered following their poor performance in the 2019 general election. This means that they won't be allowed to field candidates in the 2023 general election. One of such parties is the Liberation Movement, and we have the Lagos State Chairman of the party, uh, Raman Adebi, with us this morning. Good morning, Mr. Adebi. Good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Now, now we understand the whole contention with the, you know, 74 parties that were deregistered, you know, in 2020. But then there was an appeal court judgment last year that said, even though, you know, INEC, you know, had the powers to deregister the party, they had gone about it, you know, with uh, disregard for court processes. What does that court of appeal ruling, you know, mean for your party? Well, what that means is that it's in the case of NUP, and the case of NUP in the appeal court was already saying that I never have a party, the registered political party. Nobody is contesting that. But what we are saying is that uh, we're in court, and I is saying the proceedings to, to the Supreme Court to get a final interpretation of that uh, portion. And in the case of the NUP, I think their case uh, is to them alone, and it, it isolates the remaining party because when the two other political parties are already in court, and uh, I never is aware of that. They challenge that to the Supreme Court. We're waiting for the termination of that and, uh, and other litigations that are in court. So if we say now, because of one uh, one political party judgment, we want to now uh, put it on top of the, the minutes on the four, I think that's unfair. I think we should be able to allow, because as it is now, status quo remains uh, ante, that yes, we mean a, a political party in Nigeria, we're in court, and the court has not determined or so not out to it. So we're in court, so if we remain a political party, and then I next need to wait for the time before they uh, continue their pronouncement that the party are fully registered. Okay, I, I want to, you know, ask about the one of the things that was mentioned. You ask about the one of the things that was mentioned for the deregistration. It says uh, the seven four political parties did not satisfy the requirements of the fourth alteration to the Constitutional Electoral Act 2010. Um, uh, quickly react to that, and then uh, do you agree that maybe you know some of these parties don't actually meet up to those requirements? I think that requirement, uh, it, according to the law, uh, is according to, to, to the fourth alteration. But what we're saying is, at the time in which INEC was completing that position, uh, not all, all all political party in Nigeria have gone to that full circle, especially my party, like the movement. We have not gone to that full circle of, uh, of um, electioneering. And because we were registered barely in 2018, and before you know it, uh, we went to the election just about a month to the election to go. And local government election have not hold at the time in which the, 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 the election of the central political party. So uh, you can't use one, one, one swipe to clean everybody out. So for some who have been there for a long time, they have their reasons. Majority of them are still in court, and for my party, I think I, I need to, need to allow us to fulfill our, our duty as a political party to Nigeria to mobilize to get uh, into elections. So, because we participated in the 2019 election, which has to do with the presidency, the Senate, uh, and the Senate and the House of uh, Reps, does not mean that we have participated in, in, in governorship and in what have you. So, and there are other political. Uh, elections that was meant to happen in the course of that year. So I think, I think was too much in a haste to do uh, the needful by taking parties out. If they have taken time to follow due process, to follow the uh, uh, democracy properly, I think we will not be in this quagmire of uh, okay. being in litigation in different courts in Nigeria. You, you said your party was registered in 2018. Mr. Adebi, can you confirm for us? You said your party was registered in the in 2018. Yes, yes. Okay, so so tell yes, us yes, about the 20, 2019 elections um, and how you, did your party get involved in 2019 elections and how did it fare? Yes, we were involved in, in 2019 election and apparently the, when we, we were registered, I think it, uh, the primary 
uh, the, the primaries was meant to be up and running during that period. And we, of course, we have to confirm for MIMEX if we were uh, registered to participate in that election. They have to clarify to us after some weeks that, oh, you are part of this because you were registered pre the election. So, and that's how we saw our way in and we participated in the election, we participated in the presidency, in the Senate, and the House of Reps, and what have you. So, uh, finally, to say that they're telling us out now, I think it's not fair. Oh, they what are I'm to this. To well, oh, and they need what I'm to allow us fair is, yeah, This is what I want us to clarify. Exactly how did your party fare in the 2019 elections? Of course, we were into the presidency, and uh, we, we had a number of votes from across the nation. And uh, according to INFO, it was not 25 25% across board. Yes, that's okay. Of course, you, you know, as a young party, uh, you need to realize that that's the reality on ground. But they need to allow us the full spectrum of the election from the presidency to the governorship to the state, to the local government, even to the world. Who says we cannot win a uh, quite a number of votes? if they allow a state in that election. But did you win any in 2019? Of course. 2019 was for presidential election. So, of course, you know who won at the... Uh, the person who won is now the president of Nigeria. So, that election alone cannot determine the yeah, full yeah. stop and say, yes, uh, we're saying your party out. Yeah, what I'm asking the, is, you know, aside the presidential, did you win in any, you know, um, other election uh, level, states, local government, anything? At the time, the local government elections were not in place. Okay, so no then. Um, All right, so Mr. Adebi, we know that there was a Supreme Court ruling you know, on Friday, May 7th, and uh, the ruling here, still like the appeal court, upheld you know, the authority of INEC to deregister the parties. So what next for your party? What, what other moves are you taking you know, in ensuring that your party gets re-registered? We're still in call with INEC. The party that was in was AUC, and the court has announced the final government of AUC. That I will give to that party. So two other parties are still in court. My party is still in court. So um, at the moment, we're still in court. So, and it, it's left for the Supreme Court to determine the final judgment of that case. So until that is done, our party to remain a political party to contend with an INEC needs to release us to be able to participate in the local government election. So if you know the Supreme Court doesn't the Supreme Court judgment doesn't swing in your favor, what plans you know does your party have? Would you be uh, maybe planning to join other parties, you know, a coalition? What what will be the next plan if you know the judgment isn't um, exactly favorable? Of course, when that is not available, we'll go back to the drawing board and we'll take a position from that point on. Okay, so um, post-2019 uh, elections, uh, 2020, you know, tell us about what the liberation uh, movement has been up to. Um, you know, is there more awareness about the party? Will it, you know, maybe have a stronger um, opportunity in the next uh, general elections? Of course, the, the, the rule of the game is you keep mobilizing, you keep mobilizing, you keep getting people uh, aware of the party. And the court case has not been favorable because, uh, you know, that is uh, a clog in the wheel of so many things that need to happen. But that does not desire us. We're doing our part, we're moving the party forward, we're, we're going our structures there and there, and we're doing our best to ensure that by the time court pronounces us back, then we'll come into in the whole thing and we'll become better for it. You know, and, and why I'm asking this is, you know, because somehow, some way, you know, I believe that the party would need to prove that it will be able to meet up with those requirements in the constitution before INEC will, you know, of course, see that it, it has met those requirements and will go ahead and consider re-registering it if that's um, an option, depending on what the court says. And so, um, what are the things that have been in, have been put in place so far that should give it a stronger chance of being re-registered? Okay, the registration, the party will be registered, and of course, the registration is another process. And no party will want to go through that, especially when it's in court with INEC. So that is the position for now. All right. So when we talk political parties in Nigeria, I mean, about 74 were deregistered. That's a lot. 
And um, while several political parties, you know, are clamoring for, you know, a, a share of the pie, many Nigerians still do not know who these political parties are. For liberation movement, you know, as a party, could you tell us a bit more about your party, what you stand for, and how, you know, you may be different from the um, two major parties that we all know in Nigeria, the APC and the PDP? Our party is the Christian movement, and we stand for equality and prosperity. And we stand for the youth, and we, stand for, and we represent all the stakeholders across the spectrum of Nigeria. We want to create uh, a credible alternative for Nigerians to have, because Nigerians have seen the years, the, the two parties, they've experienced them, we want them to experience something new. And that's why we are coming to the spectrum, that's why we go through the motion with INEC to get registered, and after registration, we participated in the election. We created awareness. They, they saw us. They met us on the street. They listened to us. They liked us. Of course, we need to go into full further spectrum of media awareness so that more Nigerians will know that there are credible alternative parties for Nigerians to have. You know, so that Nigerians will not be boxed into the two and the, the kind of violence that ensue as we perceive in the two parties now will reduce because people who have alternatives to what is on the table, and they'll be able to, you know, join freely any party of their choice. So that's what we stand for, and we stand for uh, to change the fundamentals that are wrong, the value of uh, of Nigeria, and that majority of the things we are uh, been campaigning for, or been telling Nigerians, and we want the Nigerians to see as a credible alternative to what presently exists. Well, um, do you? Or what's your reaction to? people who say that Nigeria doesn't need this many political parties. Uh, we don't need to have 80 or 90 political parties. Um, and, you know, it's a lot better if we have just a, you know, a few that people can relate with and, you know, can listen to their ideologies and see what direction to, to follow. Uh, what's your, what will be your reaction to that? I think I've, I've heard that so many times. I've heard that on the streets of Lagos from across Nigeria as well. And because people were, were only used to two parties. And, I, and like I said, when you have a credible alternative, and what do they stand to gain? They stand to gain liberation. They stand to uh, have a chance to participate. Because getting involved in democracy, democracy connotes as Nigeria is signing into its constitution, you know, freedom of participation to join, and we're a multi-party state. We're not a two-party state. So if you say only two parties is what we want, I think that's not a true, a multi-party that we sign in our constitution. Presently, as we speak, according to INEC, there are over 45 parties waiting to get registered. The 90 that we had, you know, that is registered, INEC is planning more. So that shows you that INEC is trying to respect the constitution of Nigeria in that scheme. And for Nigerians, they need to be patient and follow through because you don't need to win all you can begin modularly because everybody is looking at federal government as the only government. Look government, you can come into our party, you can win two, three words together, we can show that as a model to the world and make it work and deliver delivering democracy to the people. Everybody will begin to believe because Nigerians is thinking, are you trying to change or the full circle? You can't change the full circle in once, twice. You need to begin modularly and change things. And I think that, that's where I think Nigerians should begin to appreciate it. Because we say 91 political parties, not all of them are contesting in the same local government at the same time. Because everybody will focus on where his strength lies. And that's the beauty of democracy. Because it means that across the spectrum of Lagos, you can have different political party wins. It means different views, different orientation. And that will give room to a robust democracy, a robust discussion, a robust development, for everybody. All right, and also um, the, the Supreme Court, of course, ruling is what we're expecting next. So um, how would you like the Supreme Court to see things different or from your perspective? Uh, what is your prayer to the Supreme Court? Yeah, our prayer to INEC, uh, sorry, to the Supreme Court, the APS Court in Nigeria, has been to list us as a political party so that we can participate in the election, so that those that we have, that, that have gained our trust can take it to the poll and demonstrate at the local level across Nigeria. And then we begin to build up from there up until we get to the presidency. It's a build up, it's not magic. It starts, you need to start modularly and grow 
better and grow wider because people need to uh, test your efficiency, test your ideology of your party, and test how you run the governance and deliver equality and prosperity to all. Uh, how how far uh, is uh, the Liberation Movement Party spread across Nigeria? Well, I have a distinction in the Celtic state of Nigeria, including LGFCT and our uh, uh, and our head, uh, head, um, head, head of in Abuja. Okay, all right. Um, well, Mr. Debi, I think um, I'm not sure Fanetta wants to. Well, I, I basically, you know, asked a question earlier that um, I, I didn't get your answer to regarding, you know, the verdicts of the Supreme Court. I'm saying if at the end of the day, Supreme Court up, upholds the decision of, you know, INEC and the Supreme and the Appeal Court, that INEC indeed has the power to register the political parties, did not fulfill the requirements for registration, like INEC has said, you know, and all the prayers are not granted. Uh, is the liberation movement looking to, you know, work with other political parties to see if they can actually form a coalition? Is, is that an alternative that you may be looking at? That's an option on the table. When, when uh, we don't pray that happens, but if, if it happens, you know, we have the options on our table to join hands with other, with other parties. We go back to the drawing board to come up with a strategy of what we're going to do as an association, as a group of people who believe in our ideology and our, and see which, which other party has similar ideology with us or we go for the registration. So these are so many options that are available to us that we're going to take when we get to the bridge. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Rahman Adebi, for your time on The Breakfast. Thank you very much. All right. Have a great day. All right. On to you. We're still talking security this morning. Our next uh, major conversation, uh, we're talking once again attack on police uh, facilities and police stations and policemen and, uh, you know, how all of this can stop. And, of course, they're seeking better understanding as to what exactly is going on in Nigeria, in the southeast and in the south-south. Um, what exactly is the cause of some of these attacks? Um, like I mentioned earlier, is there a plan to weaken the security, you know, architecture in those areas for, of course, a bigger plan? We'll have that conversation right next after yes, the short break. Yes, indeed. Just stay with us. <laughs>